How you guys doing? The Strategist here, coming at you with another video, otherwise also known as the uh, Strategic Productions. Um, I wanted to make a video because I thought about this while I was uh, playing on PS4 today. I was actually playing um, Spider-Man because I got it like mad late. Uh, well, not recently, but I got it, like earlier. I think like during the summer and I got it during the days of play sale and um, you know it was like twenty dollars or whatever so you know I've been playing that and uh, it made me actually get to thinking something it made me get to thinking that consoles are so limited in the amount of games that you can play on them at any given time um, and I just wanted to make a video talking about why I personally think that PC or PC gaming is most more than likely the best option out of all the other options for hardcore and serious gamers like myself, like many of you that are hardcore and serious gamers within this hobby, within this medium that, you know, we all love. So, uh... <clears throat> let's get into it so one reason is that there's no again like I you know said just now in uh, in the introduction of the video there's no limit to how many games that you can play at any given time uh, you can play as many games at, from as many eras as you want at any given time on the PC platform so for me for like like for me for example, I went back and I played all four Silent Hill games. I uh did a marathon of Silent Hill 1, 2, 3 and 4. And um I couldn't have done that if I was just only on consoles. Because Silent Hill 1 is only on the PS3 and PSP if you want to play the PlayStation classics PSN version of it otherwise you have to go out and buy, buy it on Amazon or eBay okay so ESPXC which is the main flagship emulator for the PC uh, plays the game just fine same thing with Silent Hill 2 3 and 4 the HD collection as y'all know on, on, the, on the PS3 360 is not very good so what I had to do was I was like I'm not gonna play the HD collection I already played and played through the uh, Silent Hill 3's HD uh, port which was not very good it's like sound glitches and all this other crazy stuff in it so I was like I want to play the pure version of Silent Hill 3 and Silent Hill 2 and I ended up getting the PC version and same with Silent Hill 4 I ended up getting the PC version for Silent Hill 2, applied the Enhanced Edition. Silent Hill 3, I got the fix. Gave it the HD visual uh, cleanup. And Silent Hill 4, same thing. Got the fix, gave it the HD cleanup. And it was all dope. You know what I'm saying? It was all dope. So, um, again, I couldn't have done that if I was just playing on PS4. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't have done that if I was just playing on Xbox or Nintendo Switch. So the PC gave me the more options. It gave me the options to play all those classic games on one device, basically for free. <laughs> so um, that that was great. You know that was awesome. Uh, and also um, the PC, uh, there's no limit on backwards compatibility. If you bought a game on Steam in 2003, or if you bought a game on Origin, um, like say 2000, I think Origin launched in like 2011 or something like that, 2010, I don't remember. But if you bought a game on Origin back when it first launched, bought a game on Steam back when it first launched, bought a game when you played back when it first launched, if you still have your account information, you can play those very same games on your newly updated PC with no strings attached 
you can play those very same games in higher settings in higher frame rate with mods you know to improve character models mods to, to improve uh, textures HD texture packs unofficial patches and stuff like that so you can also play those older games that you might have had in your account you maybe never played them or you know you didn't get to them back when they when you first bought them or you play a little bit back when you first bought them and you want to actually go and play them now because you got a new brand new shiny pc you can do that you can do that on uh, on pc so there's no limit to backwards compatibility uh if you made an account on steam in 2003 you can play those very same games you bought on steam in 2003 now um if you provided you still have your steam account information so it's 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 really cool man really cool in respects to that um so that's one reason no limit on backwards compatibility you have infinite backwards compatibility on pc some games are a little finicky to get to run there were some games that i tried to run and they won't work you know what i'm saying um, or just I just couldn't get it to work so uh, sometimes that does happen but not all the time not all the time uh, secondly let's get to the second point the second point is uh, the amount of flexibility PC has so on PC you can use just about any controller that you want um, when it comes to playing games, so you're not limited on what controller you can use. So you can use the DualShock 4, you can use the, uh, this is the Fight Pro, you know, uh, pad for the Switch. You know, you can get it, I got it for Smash. Um, you can use this. I use this on the GameCube emulator. Um, you can use, uh, the, uh, Pro Controller. I use sometimes I use the Pro Controller when I'm playing uh, SNES games. Uh, you can use practically any controller that you want on the uh, PC. So it's flexible, it's very flexible in um, the amount of options that you have and controls you can use. So if you don't like a certain controller on uh, a certain console, PC doesn't have that problem. You can use just about any controller you want. Now, on older games, you pretty much are going to be forced most of the time to use mouse and keyboard. Uh, you could use like third party apps like Joy to Key and stuff, but I would just say go with mouse and keyboard and just don't even worry about it because going to the trouble of doing that is too much of a hassle, in my opinion. But yeah, second is the amount of flexibility you can use any controller you want, there's mods. There's um, mods to make the game the game better. Um, you can use mods to enhance games or to even you know to play the games the way you the way you want. Uh, I remember with Resident Evil 2 Remake, I was trying to get the um, the secret weapons, the extra weapons that you get. And what I ended up doing was I used mods to actually turn off Mr. X and to turn off the zombies and just go straight through it so I didn't have to worry about it because it was a pain in the ass to do. If it was like Resident Evil Remake, I could have did it, but Resident Evil 2 Remake is kind of a pain when it comes to that. So, you know, you can modify the games, you know, most of the times the way you want it. So the amount of flexibility is definitely there, which is, you know, really cool, you know, for serious gamers. Third is convenience. Convenience, convenience, convenience. Oh my goodness. The PC is, you're, you're going to get the most bang out of your buck when it comes to the PC. There's multiple sites that you can use, multiple retailers that you can uh, visit from G2A, which I use the most. Uh, I know it's a gray market and developers don't really get money, but hey, motherfuckers buy used games all the time. So, same shit. <laughs> same concept applies here. Um, but, 
uh, you know, I, I use G2A. Sometimes I use CD keys. They also have, um, you know, Frantic and uh, Humble Bundle, which Humble Bundle, uh, they have these things called Humble, Humble Bundle Monthlies, which you pay $12 a month and get access to three games. Usually it's three, but usually it's three, three games, yeah. And right now they have Yakuza Kiwami, Soul Calibur 6, and My Time in Portia up there right now and it beats xbox one's xbox live gold and it beats playstation because you're paying way less for all of those games and guess what you can keep them as long as you want you don't have to go back and pay to 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 to, to play those games you can keep them on your account as long as you want so you get that twelve dollars a month, gets you access to three games that you can keep forever. Okay, um, as well as you can get way more games on PC in bulk in comparison to buying on consoles. At most on consoles, you probably get deals where you can buy maybe one or two games and save a little bit. But on PC, there's a bunch of older games that you can play, even newer games that you can get for a value, a good value price. Um, you know, and these are games that you can go back and play, uh, and, and really enjoy a lot. And, you know, I'm saying, no matter if they're old or new, you know, PC gives you the option to go from old or new without a hassle. So convenience is something that I think is paramount when it comes to hardcore and serious gamers because you're constantly playing games all the time and you're always looking for something different for something new uh, for something innovative so you know PC gives you ability the ability to explore that because you can get 10 games maybe even 20 games for the price of maybe fifty dollars forty dollars thirty dollars you can get a lot of games in bulk for very cheap you know, Steam sells, G2A, all this other different type of stuff. Um, so the convenience is paramount in in the space of PC gaming. And third, um, graphics. Now, somebody might ask a question, how is graphics important to a hardcore or serious gamer's um dealings in playing video games well one of the reasons is because you can get just about any game pretty much just just about any game in 60 frames per second now on the consoles whether you look at the pro or the x not every game is guaranteed to run at 60 frames per second there's a lot of games that come out on those systems that still only run at 30 or are into the 40s but they don't consistently run at a steady 60 frames per second so for people that play very gameplay intensive games that require the best response time PC is definitely the way to go because you can get 60 frames on any game you play and trust me, let me tell you this, 60 frames per second makes a hell of a difference in your gameplay experience. Because I've literally played games that i played on consoles that I didn't like as much. And when I played them on PC, whoa, the experience just elevated. Experience just elevated based upon me playing it at 60 frames per second. So... And also with the increased fidelity to it, sometimes you'll be sitting there playing games. You look at your Steam, uh, you know, your Steam time length, your Steam play time. It'll be like seventy hours. You're like, damn, I spent seventy hours playing this game. And a game you can beat the game in like three hours, but you spent that long playing it because you were just exploring the different graphical presets and the different graphical options that the game offers. 
um, and customize and get to your liking. And just playing these games at these higher frame work, higher frame rates. Um, consoles just usually, most of the time, don't really have access to that. Even with these newer beefed up systems, um, 60 frames is still not really a standard. You'd be lucky to get 60 frames consistently with these consoles, these uh, newer systems like the X and the Pro. <laughs> um, so yeah, man, graphics, definitely. Oh my, oh man. I, I when I was mostly playing on consoles, I always thought the graphics on PC were kind of like minimal upgrades from what the consoles gave. But pretty much, I could say now that the PC gives a huge boost over what you saw as graphics on the consoles. So, fidelity, you know, is one thing. Frames per second is also another thing. Um, you know, as well as, you know, going into our next point, upgradability. Upgradability is important to serious and hardcore gamers because with upgradability comes um, basically not having to go out and shell out to buy a new console. Um, what that means is that you can keep everything that you had from before, you know what I'm saying, and all you have to, all you would have to do is just change out you know what I'm saying a graphics card or a CPU or a power supply it's all you have usually have to do when you're upgrading your PC so you keep everything that you had previously from your last build you understand what I'm saying from your last build and you don't have to deal with buying new games. I know that's kind of similar to the backwards compatibility, but, you know, you know, bear with me. So you don't have to deal with buying new games. You don't have to deal with buying new controllers. You don't have to deal, uh, deal with having a new controller. Um, you don't have to deal with any of the shortcomings that comes with having to buy a new console every five years. You can just slap a new graphics card in there, Slap a new CPU in there, bam, good to go. Everything, everything you had before is still there. Whereas when you get a PS5 or you get a Nintendo Switch or you get the new Xbox console potentially, you might not be able to play certain games. You might not even be able to use certain controllers. You know? Because you can't even use the PS3 controller on a uh, PlayStation 4. You know what I'm saying? So it's stuff like that that does make a difference in, uh, in when you're purchasing new consoles. You know? Even in purchasing new consoles, there's certain features that are missing when you buy a new console. Like with PS4, there was a lot of features that PS4 didn't have that PS3 had. Whereas on PC, you had the same PC you had before you upgrade. So, upgradability is very um, handy on PC. Because you had, you're gonna have pretty much the same PC, at least in functionality, um, and, 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 and operating system, and, and um, peripherals. It's going to be the same thing you had before. So you don't ever have to worry about having to completely come out of your comfort zone and deal with the new system. So those are pretty much four reasons why I feel that the PC is very important in hardcore and serious gaming. Because of those reasons. So if you sat through the video, I know it's a long video. If you sat through the video this long and it interests you and entertained you, 
and um, you felt that these points were valid, I would like you to subscribe. I would like you to leave a comment. I would like you to leave a like. And please remember to stray. To stray. <laughs> remember to stay strategic. And I'm out.